Namaste. This is Michelle Skolepsky Boyd. It's important you understand that even though I am certified with the International Medical and Dental Hypnotherapy Association, I am not a doctor, nor should any part of the experiences be construed as medical diagnosis or advice. Most importantly, follow your inner truth and enjoy the experience, come what may. Namaste, Soul Felt family. It's Michelle Skolesky Boyd, intuitive medium and best selling author. And this is the add on bonus for module one of Be Your Own Intuitive Medium. It's specifically designed for those of you who are stuck in negative energy patterns, you overthink, you are over flooded with emotions into so much overwhelm or depression that your emotions are out of control. This is the audio that you're going to want to listen to. So kick back, relax, and as I like to say, enjoy the experience. Namaste, everybody. This is Michelle Skoletsky Boyd, the corporate woo, -woo, and some of you are returning to go through the course another time. I'll be talking uh, to your left brain quite a bit, uh, but I just want to take a moment and just ask you to settle in. Uh, with each of these, it's important that you get comfortable. So have your shoes kicked off, you know, really be in a space that you feel like you can be yourself, uh, turn off any phones or anything that might be distracting. Just really make this time for you. This is an investment in yourself. And I really do value your being here and you really being willing to say yes to your higher self so that you can learn how to trust your intuition and how to successfully cross the veil, all things that we'll talk about here in just a minute. So um, what I'd like to do is just give you a little bit of an idea of what we're going to be covering in this module. And then after some discussion uh, about some energy and really what it looks like in terms of where we currently are, uh, we're going to do a little guided imagery exercise to really help you begin to move into self-awareness. So today is really about getting in uh, a place of preparation. So if you can imagine that we're taking a soul journey together, today is about getting all of your gear, getting all your gear ready so we can take this journey together. And so over the course of the next nine months, um, it's going to be essential that you are really in a place of being open and also not really attaching too much in terms of expectation and releasing your need to know. Left brain can get in the way. So today I'm gonna to be talking to the left brain as much as I can, but we're slowly gonna release uh, the logical side of the brain because intuition uh, really occurs from the right side of the brain, which we'll talk about more in module two because you'll have uh, some soul exercises and assignments that will really be beneficial for you. And you'll wanna use all of that time to be able to do that. Uh, I'm gonna give you a very brief overview as far as my history, my background, that type of thing. If you want to do your own research, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff out there, guys. You can go to my website, etc., cetera, uh, and learn more about uh, who I am and where I've come from. <laughs> so um, a lot of people, uh, their very first questions is, how much experience have you had uh, in terms of the intuitive realm? I've had this uh, ability to connect to uh, the other side, the afterlife, the afterworld, call it what you will. My very first memory was when I was four uh, and my mother's sister who had passed away, my mother was uh, a very small girl. Uh, she came to me. So I had never met her in real life and my mom barely even remembered her. Um, but she came through and the information and the details that I was able to give when I was just four years old uh, was convincing enough that it was indeed my mom's sister. And so it was a, it was a beautiful moment for me to help affirm my gifts. And uh, I was also uh, lucky enough, let's say, <laughs> to have a very beautiful uh, maternal grandmother who followed the traditions of Cherokee Way which in future modules, you'll hear me talk about that a little bit more. 
So I was uh, born and raised very strict Roman Catholic on one side of the family. And so there was a lot of, uh, let's say, obstacles around religion, around fears, around judgment, um, punishment, just uh, a lot of shame, things that I wasn't even aware of until I started going on this path. So I'm now a three times bestselling author for Words for the Soul, Heaven Sent Life Lessons and Conversations with God. And uh, I'll be uh, asking you to kind of refer to some of those stories now and again it's really going to help you wherever it is you are on your path. And of course, you're always going to want to use your intuitive guidance to be able to assist you with that as well in choosing the perfect story for you. Because each of you are here uh, in different time zones, different places from all over the world. Uh, it's interesting because uh, I usually have just as many people sign up internationally as I do people here in the U.S. And so um, it's wherever you are, I welcome you. <laughs> it's just very exciting to, to be here and to uh, be guiding you. In fact, uh, there was interest recently uh, as of this recording. Uh, one of my private clients is out on his private catamaran his yacht and he was saying hey can I partake in this um, I'm not gonna have internet access very often until I go into port yes it is possible so um, in addition to being a soul journey guide and intuitive and to be and actually being brought up uh, with some uh, Native American Cherokee upbringing as well as Catholic upbringing uh, I have a whole modality in terms of my background. Not only am I a Reiki master teacher, which we'll talk about a little bit later today, uh, but I also uh, love to write. I love to sing, so I do some sound therapy. I am uh, schooled in neurolinguistic programming. I am a certified clinically, uh, clinically certified hypnotherapist through the International Medical and Dental Hypnotherapy Association. I see both clients virtually and also in person. I also uh, teach many classes and workshops, uh, which you might see some invitations coming your way during our nine months together, and feel free to take those if you you feel called and if not that's okay too. Time commitment. I've had some people ask uh, how much time is it going to take in terms of you know taking this course is it going to be a big commitment and the answer to that is uh, in terms of the minimum requirement I would say that you're going to want to plan on 10 to 15 minutes a day. Uh, some people spend a lot more time than that. Uh, they go to some of my additional classes, etc. And uh, that's totally fine. But at minimum, you want to spend 10 to 15 minutes a day. And you always want to put yourself first. I recommend that uh, as you're practicing, as you're doing soul assignments, which you'll receive as we go throughout our nine months together, that you really spend uh, time first thing in the morning, you set your alarm clock early, and just spend 10 to 15 minutes meditating. If we put ourselves first, if we fill up ourselves, we then have room to give to others. And it's so essential that you put yourself first in this way. Otherwise, the day goes by and it's like anything else. You just don't get to it. And then before you know it, you're falling behind and then you're trying to catch up and it can be very, very difficult. Uh, and so I just, I really encourage you to spend those 10 to 15 minutes a day consistently uh, breathing deeply and uh, remembering the breath work. Breath work is so important when you when you do the breathing and when you uh, synchronize and harmonize to the heartbeat of Mother Earth. Your breath is rhythmically matching nature. It's allowing you to align to flow. And it's just such a beautiful experience in that it starts to balance both of the hemispheres of your brain, which we'll talk about why this is really key when it comes to intuition more in module two. Other people have asked, uh, can we do other classes and courses that are something that you're not offering? Can we do them simultaneously if another teacher is offering them? There are really no rules here. And so my answer to that is, you know, just go with what feels good to you. Follow your truth. Uh, for some of you, it's really going to work well. It's going to be a, a great complimentary uh, 
training, a lesson, class, whatever it is you're feeling drawn to. And for others of you, it's really there to be more of a distraction, to keep you away from going within. And so if you're noticing that um, it's more of a distraction, then recognize that it might be a form of self-sabotage, which we'll talk again about that in module two. So just take a moment and sit with it before you sign up for something else, okay? Um, there are three trimesters to these nine months. The first three months are all around self-awareness. The second uh, three months are all around self-trust. And the third trimester, the last three months, are around self-acceptance. And so um, at the end of this course, should you do your inner work, you'll have more patience, more confidence, and more courage so that you trust your intuition and you can successfully cross the veil. That's the ultimate goal. That's why you're here. <laughs> um, for this particular trimester, we're going to begin very slow. And for those of you who have a get with it personality, let's just get it done. It can feel um, painful, perhaps, because we're going so slow. We are deliberately and purposely going slow for a reason. We're going slow because there are some of you who have emotional overwhelm and we need to slow down. And there are some of you who need to feel safe and secure in order for you to move forward. And so we are deliberately going slow to help you recognize your own self-awareness and to help you feel secure moving forward because even though we're going slow in the beginning, it starts to accelerate. And when it accelerates, it starts to take off. So we're going to take it slow. Uh, come module two, what you can expect is we're going to dive deeper into how energy works. And we're going to talk about why self-sabotage self, self occurs. <laughs> I almost did some self-sabotage there in my, in my words. Um, why we get hung up, why we get stuck, all of this stuff. Uh, module three, again, it's all self-awareness. So we're going to deepen that awareness and we're gonna take a look at your current perception. We're gonna actually go through, come module three, a nice little meditation where you're gonna to get to know your main angel, your main spirit guide. Uh, speaking of which, there's all different terms, guys, so go with what works for you. Um, I know we have all different walks of life here, all different religions, so um, if it doesn't feel good to you for, you know, uh, when I say God source, uh, if you'd prefer creator, if you'd prefer infinite intelligence, use what works for you. You're gonna hear me say God source a lot because I really am comfortable with that term. Um, I also encourage you to uh, really follow your truth in terms of spirit guides, in terms of if it feels better to call it an avatar, if it feels better to call it an angel, if it feels better to call it a loved one, whatever works for you. Archangel, <laughs> go with your truth. It's really important. Uh, some of you have asked me uh, in terms of the time release of the modules. Like, why are they time released? And um, more specifically, what's gonna happen when we start to accelerate, when you talk about uh, your life is never gonna be the same? Uh, many of you have heard in, in my promotional video, you also saw on the page where you signed up, that I talk about the red pill, the blue pill, about how your life is never the same for those of you who saw the matrix. It's because we are really shifting energy here. And where you're at right now in terms of your vibration, in terms of your frequency, is going to be very different today compared to where you are nine months from now, knowing and trusting that you're doing your inner work and that you're moving forward. So I can honestly say this because during our time together, there's gonna be a really powerful transfer of energy that starts to occur. We are all here, by the way, to learn from one another. So you'll be teaching me some things, I'm sure, just as much as I'm teaching you. My role and my purpose is to be your soul journey guide, to help you with self-empowerment and to teach you some proven tools to help open your intuition and help you cross the veil. Your role 
is to follow your truth at each and every step, each and every turn. And it's important that you follow your truth. So if, for example, we're doing a guided meditation and I say to you, uh, like, imagine yourself outside and the sun is coming out and that's not what you're getting at all. You're indoors and it, there's no sun. <laughs> if that's the case, keep following your truth. It's really important that you honor that. Sometimes with self-awareness, we have self-talk that gets in uh, into our perception. We start to recognize our own self-talk. We start to recognize stuck emotions. We start to recognize uh, where it is that we currently are in terms of our calibration and that vibration. So something I'd like for you to consider is where do you frequent? And I say this lovingly because frequent, when we look up the word frequent in the Webster's Merriam Dictionary, it says happening often and in short intervals. So where do you most often frequent when it comes to self-talk? when it comes to emotions, when it comes to people that you hang out with, that type of thing. Frequency, the definition of frequency is frequent repetition, a number of complete oscillations per second of energy in the form of waves. We're all electromagnetic energy oscillating at certain waves, light waves, sound waves, that type of thing. So what does your self-talk sound like? What thoughts do you often frequent? So just sit with that for a little bit. What groups or people are you interacting with most in person and on social media? What's coming up in your feed? What type of vibration? What type of mood? What type of frequency? because that's what you're matching to, that's what you're emitting. Uh, are you able to release? Are you able to let go? That's another question I'd like for you to ask yourself. How easily can you release? How easily can you let go? Do you let things get under your skin? Are things irritating you? Are things angering you? Are things agitating you, frustrating you? These are all things I'd like for you to start asking yourself because we are building into self-awareness. There's no judgment here. It's just simply recognizing your current frequency, your current vibration. So the question that I have for you is, do your thoughts rule you or is it the other way around? Do you rule your thoughts? Now, most of you are in what I would call observer mode. You are able to observe your thoughts and you can observe your breath when you take the time and make the time to slow down to do it. So when you make the time to be in the present moment, when you get purposeful and intentional, you can begin to observe your thoughts. You can begin to observe your breath. However, most of you, <laughs> you're doing it only when you're making the time to go within. By the end of this course, we're going to open up your frequency and your vibration, that oscillation, in so that you can get to a higher calibration uh, so that you can begin to recognize your thoughts, your emotions, your breath more often. We're not perfect, none of us are perfect, but much more often so that the thoughts stop ruling you in your day to day and so that you can be in charge of them as well as your emotions. So some of you, you're maybe even wondering what the heck are you talking about, Michelle? Is there even an option? My thoughts are always ruling me. I didn't even know that it was possible that, that uh, we could rule our thoughts. And so I'm going to help all of you wherever you are right now. And we're gonna do a little bit of a guided imagery exercise to help you see how you can uh, really start to shift your perspective with grace and with ease. And um, I'd just like everybody to close your eyes, if you would, and just begin focusing on your breath.
we're just going to slow down the pace of the breathing a bit. Notice the rising and the falling of the chest. And just remember that as you close those eyes and begin to focus on the breath, that the doors of intuition open through the world of imagination. So if it starts to feel like you're making this up, remember that this is good. This is a good thing. We want to feel like we're pretending, like we're going into a land of make-believe. Because again, the doors of intuition open through the world of imagination. So to begin, I'd like for you to imagine that you're somewhere outdoors. And again, if that doesn't feel right, then it's okay to be indoors, follow your truth. But preferably be somewhere outdoors. And imagine yourself holding a feather. Any kind of feather will do. And now imagine that you're letting it go because there's some big rush, some big current of wind or air. So that feather just moves easily and freely from you. Now, on your next breath, begin to imagine that you're holding a grasshopper and this grasshopper is moving around in your hand a little bit. Just pretend that it begins to jump from your hand as you release it. Good. Now imagine that you're in front of a beautiful ocean. Just bring in the music and the lighting and the smells and notice your temperature, notice what you're wearing, how you feel inside this nightclub. Good. Now on your next breath, bring your awareness back to the present moment, wherever it is you are, and open your eyes. Hi. <laughs> so what this exercise does is it helps you begin to understand that you're the observer and that what you're imagining is the observed. And so you can, at the same time, have a thought that comes in. The thought might be, uh, oh, wow, look at my hair. It's starting to kink around my neck. Or look, my makeup's starting to smear a bit or whatever, right? It's a thought. And I'm observing the thought the same way that I was observing in my imagination, the feather blowing away on the currents of air, the same way that I imagine the grasshopper jumping out of my hand, we can release those thoughts and let them go. In other words, we can rule our thoughts instead of allowing our thoughts to rule us. The issue is we've gotten into a habit of repeating certain thoughts or allowing certain emotions to, to overwhelm us, to flood us, to the point where we feel like we have no control of them. I'm here to tell you we do. So start to become aware that you are the observer. Notice the observed thought, notice the observed breath, notice the observed emotion. Again, we're building slowly into self-awareness. So to recap, we are all at a certain free frequency. We're all vibrating at a certain frequency per second in oscillating waves. Therefore, you are attracting, according to the law of attraction, certain outcomes and events based on your vibration. And for some of you, you're vibrating at a, a nice, beautiful, wow, I'm, I'm in flow, there's synchronistic events that are starting to occur, I'm starting to get signs, and some of you, not so much. And so uh, I wanna just briefly talk about uh, my Reiki master teaching abilities and how this kind of plays in 
to all of you who have signed up as elite members. So uh, Reiki uh, Ascension is a little bit different than traditional Reiki. Uh, let me just say that Reiki can be done remotely and these Reiki Ascensions are done remotely because this is a virtual course, it's a virtual class, and there's very few of you that uh, I'm meeting in person. And so um, I will always announce ahead of time when I plan on uh, sending Reiki. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Reiki, I'll just share that this is a form of healing that dates way back, it's a Japanese form of healing, and it dates way back to the mid 1800s. Reiki Ascension is a healing that uh, helps you begin to uh, vibrate, to begin to ascend in terms of frequency to a new level. And uh, I will always give you a heads up when I'm about to administer, you'll always have the option of saying yes or no, and they will be done purposely in a slow fashion. So I'm not just going to give you a, a full Reiki Ascension healing right off the bat, because uh, we wanna take this uh, like we would a time release capsule. We want it to slowly enter our system so that we don't feel too overwhelmed, so it doesn't shock the system too, too much. So before I became a Reiki master teacher, my Reiki master teacher, who I was studying with, who at the time had over 20 years of uh, practice, she explained to me that in her first, first time ever in her career, uh, that she recognized that I have an ability to help people ascend, to help people uplift, and that that's where my gifts lie. So when she passed her, uh, her healing onto me, it's kind of like when we're lighting somebody else's candle, that's kind of how it is in Reiki. When she passed those gifts, opened up the gifts in me, and I said yes to them, uh, I was given a title of Reiki Ascension Master Teacher. So some of you who are Reiki Master Healers, teachers, you might have never heard this term, uh, but what I'll tell you is that um, we are all able to ascend and we all, in order to ascend and to cross the veil, we have to be vibrating at a certain frequency and I can help you get there and Reiki Ascension Attunements can be very helpful for that. Not everybody needs it though. Some of you are going to feel like you don't need it and that's okay. Some of you will feel like you do. Follow your truth. We have this ability to ascend. Dr. Raymond Moody talks about how we can help uh, people cross the veil. It's called shared death experience. For those of you who haven't heard of it, you may want to just do a quick search on it. Shared death experience, Dr. Raymond Moody. I have the I had the privilege of meeting with him uh, out in Portland on an afterlife uh, conference and uh, really getting to know him. And uh, if you've ever witnessed one of your loved ones who's just about ready to pass, they're they're on. Uh, this brink between life and death, and they start to uh, hallucinate what looks like a hallucination, where they start to talk to relatives who have passed over. They're talking to them themselves. They're they're saying, you know, they're, that their angels are there. They're describing things. Uh, what I will tell you is that this, in particular, is because the veil is starting to thin. The veil, by the way, is just it's a, it's it's the illusion that we take on when we as a spiritual being become a human. We take on the illusion that we're separate from the spiritual beings who aren't yet in physical form or who haven't taken physical form or who once were in physical form like those who have passed on. And so when the veil starts to thin, the illusion dissipates, it disappears, and those who are ready to cross over uh, or those who are, are able to assist people in crossing over with shared death experiences, with uh, intuitive mediumship, channeling, etc., that veil thins and we then can feel and sense and recognize that loved ones are on the other side. So as we go through this course, the veil will begin to thin more and more and more. 
It just happens. It's just the way that it is. Some of you, you're in your comfort zone and you really don't want to make the shift. And that's okay. That's why the money back guarantee is there. Most of you, you really, really are ready. You've said yes to yourself, you've committed to do this, and you're going to go through it, you're going to move forward, and you are ready for this transformation and this transcendence to occur, which most times it will. Now, I say most times because there have been some cases where during the nine months, some people get kind of hung up. So if you ever have uh, watched a river and there's some like little eddies in the river and the stick kind of gets hung up in the eddy and it just spins and spins there you know some people that have taken this course they ended up off on the side in a little eddy and they're spinning and they're spinning and they're spinning they're not quite ready to progress to go down that beautiful stream with everyone they're not there and uh, they're getting hung up in stuckness and thoughts and, you know, for whatever reason, they got distracted, work took over, uh, health, uh, who knows, right? There's all different reasons. And what's beautiful about this course is that it's all set up so that you can go back, go through the course again, uh, whenever you'd like. So some of you are here, as I mentioned, for the very first time, and some of you are going through it again. And so wherever you are, just know that it's absolutely perfect and it's all divine. For those of you who haven't yet heard this, in science, there's something called octave resonance. And this really, it's a phenomenon whereby um, this goes back to uh, the vibration, the frequency, and how your life is going to not really be the same after this course because as a Reiki Ascension Master, as an intuitive, as a soul journey guide, my job is to bring you to uh, a place where that veil thins and where you trust your intuition, etc. And so in science, this octave resonance. It's a phenomenon where, for, for those of you who understand music, if you take a violin, you have one violin on one hand and another violin next to it, and you pluck a certain note on the violin, that same string on the other violin will begin to vibrate, will begin to move. And this has been you know, shown again and again and again, it's been proven that this occurs. This is an octave resonance. And so that's really essentially what starts to happen here is uh, we attune as Reiki masters, we attune people to certain vibrations, certain frequencies. And in this case, it's Reiki ascension so that you can learn how to trust your intuition and cross the veil. So an energy transfer begins to occur. And some of you have heard of the term entrainment. And so clocks, they can entrain each other. If you have um, some of those ticking clocks, the ones that you wind and they're, you know, the tick, 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 um, the stronger vibration, you know, if the clock is, let's say, uh, 30 seconds off, one of them's 30 seconds off from the other, the one that's stronger, it has a stronger tick, 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 you know, stronger vibration is the best way I can say it then eventually that, that other one is going to entrain to it. It will match up with it so that they all start moving in sync at the same time. It's just, it's a beautiful thing. So those transfers of energies continue to occur in a very loving and a very intentional way. For those of you who understand herbs, some people call them herbs, um, when you're taking a natural herb, herb, um, I really like to use my intuition in terms of you know muscle testing and all all of this in terms of uh, what to take and how to take it. When it comes to this course, I'm using my intuition in terms of prescribing these energy transfers to you the same way that you would give yourself an herb, right? Uh, and it's really a beautiful time release that occurs and as it occurs you trust that nature and healing occurs and that a little goes a long way and you're also trusting that as you do your inner work that you understand that consistency is key so just like it's important that you take 
herbs at a certain time for a certain length of time in order for them to synchronize and harmonize your body. The same is true with the offerings that I'm making to you. Uh, this module, the soul assignments, they're all time released. And so I offer them to you. It's up to you to do your inner work because and to take as them as in a nice, will tell you, I'm much like a little mother way duck so in that we can continue that, you know, to All of you are behind me, but I'm just going to keep going. So if you get in one of those eddies and you get sidetracked, I'm trusting that you'll catch up in due time. Okay? So um, let's talk about uh, self-talk and emotional stuckness for just a moment. Uh, we'll talk about more self-sabotage in module two, but I want to just circle back to the fact that your life is discovered by following your joy. Yet if you're in a place that is depressed, if your energy is heavy, if it's flattened, if it's dense, uh, a lot of times this occurs because we're stuck in a certain pattern, a certain frequency, that habit of self-talk, uh, certain emotions, uh, certain circumstances, whatever that is, uh, if you're moving through grief, through loss, through change, uh, a catharsis, which is another word to say release, is necessary. It's a necessary first step before uh, anything positive, anything more uplifting can move in. So while we're going through uh, self-awareness, just recognize what it is that's coming up for you, but you'll see in module two that for some of you, you're going to feel like uh, I'm asking some questions that are tough and I'm starting to stir some stuff in you that might feel a little uncomfortable. We need to uh, remember that we're taking this slow. I'm not expecting you to do anything with this other than just to notice it and observe it at this point. It's during our time together in trimester two, during self-trust, that we then begin to do something with it. So don't expect too many miracles right away, okay? If you, gr if you get them, great. But don't set yourself up uh, for high, you know, such a high bar, especially if you have perfectionist tendencies, because it's really gonna be um, something that you're attaching yourself to. And this is about releasing, it's about surrendering, it's about noticing. So this is why we start slow. Uh, in this module, you're going to hear me talk also about the logical left brain. We'll talk about that quite a bit in module two. Uh, we're going to do some experiential stuff um, and um, ease our way into it. So come next time around, uh, we're going to do a little bit experiential work. And then come module three, as I mentioned, we're going to go much more deep. All again, all again safe deliberate, purposeful, time released. So again, if you're impatient, you might think this is unnecessary, but after working with clients from all sectors of life, all different uh, professions, all different people from around the globe, I can tell you that this is really important. This is probably one of the most important steps is to take it slow because when you go too fast, this is really important, I want, I want to make sure everybody's listening, when you do go too fast, you can bliss yourself out. You know, there's a term for that, they're going off the deep end. And it's because they didn't take the time. They just jumped in without knowing what in the heck they were doing. And then before you know it, there's problems. And so I don't teach like that. We go slow, we go safe, we go deliberate. And that way we always follow our guidance rather than rushing in. It's also like learning to ride a bike. We're gonna put some training wheels on first. We're gonna take it slow. So we're gonna ease our way into this uh, in a way that feels safe. And the best way that we're gonna do this is to begin to raise our frequency by using the power of gratitude. And so this is a perfect time of year to start to set ourselves into that beautiful space of gratitude. So I'm gonna just read the definition of gratitude from Merriam-Webster's. Gratitude is a feeling of appreciation or thanks. And the word gratitude is derived from the Latin word gratia. I might be saying that wrong because I didn't take Latin, but G-R-A-T-I-A, and it means gratefulness, graciousness, and grace. So let's talk about grace for a moment. Grace, per the dictionary, is a virtue 
coming from God. And remember, God to me is source, infinite intelligence, creator, all that ever is and ever was. So follow your truth on the semantics. In other words, gratitude, grace, is praiseworthy divine assistance that offers all of you spiritual renewal and purification. And it's a wonderful way to begin. It's a wonderful energy so that we can start to restore and renew our soul. So catharsis, we talked about how catharsis was a form of release. Uh, in Greek, it means purification. It means cleansing. So this is a catharsis. This is a release using gratitude. It's a great way to purify your self-talk. It's a great way to purify your emotions. So gratitude is a very subtle, gentle, easy, slow way of releasing and attuning in small doses that you control and that are natural and their time release. And I'm gonna talk about some of the science of that. So we've all heard uh, the phrase, what goes around comes around. And you can only give what you're willing to receive, which means you can only receive what you're willing to give. It's all a big circle, <laughs> okay? So gratitude is a great way to reset yourself, to purify, to start anew. So some of the latest find, findings in science suggest that the more that you practice, uh, the more practice that you give your brain at feeling and expressing gratitude, the more it then adapts to the mindset. So much like gratitude, if you can imagine, you know, gratitude's kind of got a muscle in the brain, it then exercises that and it strengthens you and it then it tunes you to a new vibration. So Harvard uh, here in the US, their findings have been quoted as amazing and uh, quote unquote the following, something as simple as writing down three things that you're grateful for every day for 21 days in a row significantly increases your level of optimism and it holds for the next six months. Woo, that's pretty cool. So if you feel called, that's a suggestion. Uh, the science of gratitude, according to researchers at Eastern Washington University, there are four primary characteristics of grateful people. And these are the ones that send thank you notes so for those of you who have uh, been my pri private client, you know that it's not a lost art with me. I love to handwrite thank you notes uh, to keep a gratitude journal. Uh, it can also help you tap and strengthen and invigorate your intuition. Um, and the, the other thing is people who experience the most gratitude and therefore the most positive effects they tend to be the following. So they're gonna feel a sense of abundance in their lives. So that's number one. They are going to appreciate the contributions of others in terms of their well being. The third is to recognize and enjoy life's small pleasures. And the fourth is to acknowledge the importance of experiencing and expressing gratitude which is why you'll hear me in the beginning and also at the end of this tell you thank you, thank you, thank you, because I so appreciate you. Um, and it's lovely because I just got a little ding from my husband just telling me that he appreciates me. It was a little message that's just popped up, so I love that. <laughs> the synchronicity of it was beautiful. Um, so several studies uh, talk about depression and what happens, but let me first say there's an old saying uh, that if you've forgotten the language of gratitude, which some of you, you know, I'm speaking directly to you because you can feel the truth of this, you'll never be on speaking terms with happiness. So several studies around depression have shown to be inversely correlated to gratitude. It seems that the more grateful a person is, the less depressed they are. Just saying. <laughs> so a message on Facebook that I recently received reflected that being content with what we have allows us to feel complete. 
and it said this, gratitude turns what we have into enough. You are enough. And by being grateful for you, you then become enough. It's great. It's a beautiful, beautiful gift. That beautiful virtue of grace. So author and researcher Dr. Robert Emmons, E-M-M-O-N-S, goes so far as to say that gratitude is what gives our life meaning. That's pretty big. Gratitude for sure improves emotional and physical health. And when done consistently, it can strengthen your relationships and communities. Dr. John Gottman at the University of Washington has been researching marriages for two decades. And his conclusion is that of all the research, he states that unless a couple is able to maintain a high ratio of positive to negative encounters, Obviously, positive and negative emotions go along with that. He's saying a five to one or greater ratio of uh, positive encounters compared to negative uh, uh, encounters. It is likely that the marriage will end. So if you're in a relationship right now, whether you're married or not, and you're noticing that you're stuck and you want to be able to move it forward, start appreciating. Send gratitude. Send gratitude. It's amazing. So with 90% accuracy, Gottman says that he can predict often after only three minutes of observation which marriages are likely to flourish and which are likely to flounder. The formula is that for every negative expression, whether we're complaining, we're frowning, we're putting somebody down, we're criticizing, uh, whether we're doing an expression of anger, there needs to be about Five positive reinforcements such as smiles, compliments, laughter, expressions, appreciation, and gratitude. So uh, Gottman says the more you practice gratitude, the more attuned you are to it, and the more you enjoy its psychological benefits. A psychology writer wrote, like a flower, gratitude has to undergo a process of germination before it becomes second nature. Some of you are very good at this already, and some of you need a little nudge, so there you go. <laughs> um, so if it feels good to you, I uh, invite you to follow me online to really help your frequency begin to shift and uplift. So remember, each module is going to be time-released in such a way that you get some soul practice in between. Most of you will be able to uh, be able to move through the group with ease, with grace, with gratitude. Uh, you'll keep elevating your energy. And uh, I so look forward to sharing this beautiful space with all of you. Uh, and just remember that everything spirals. So if you've gone through this course and you're coming back again um, and uh, you somehow got stuck it's all coming back around now. Everything's going to spiral. You're going to be invited to now move through it again. So here we are. Life is a spiral, by the way. All of our life lessons, they just keep spiraling. They come back so that we can gain deeper truths, deeper deeper understandings. Uh, as many times if I, as I've strengthened my intuition, I, I spiral into it into that beautiful uh, space. I surrender once again, and it's amazing how much deeper I can go the next time around. And the law uh, of um, that beautiful law that states as above, that universal law as above, so below, uh, that just sh shares that in order for you to ascend, you go deep. And so as we deepen the experience, as we learn those life lessons in a deeper, meaningful way, we ascend all the higher. So I want to end by just sharing that some of you are stuck in thinking mind, uh, in logic mind, and wanting to get things right. And that thinking mind is just the tip of the iceberg. It's your conscious, rational parts. And it is the part of you that is taking in all these words, which is great. It's the part of you that knows that you're you and I'm me and it can actually, you know, count and it can tell that this is an orange shirt and all of those beautiful things. 
Uh, it helps you make sense and to categorize and to transfer relevant information and all of that. Um, but it has limited bandwidth, guys. It has limited bandwidth. So um, recognize that there's something greater. And that's where intuition comes in. We're going to talk more about that in module two. Just something to sit with for now. So soul assignment is the breathing exercises and some videos uh, that were given to you so that you could start practicing breath work so you can really feel what it's like to center and to ground. If you haven't yet done that, please do, do so. Practice that uh, 10 to 15 minutes a day. Also, if you haven't uh, gotten uh, into my soulfelt.com website and seen some of those tutorial videos, um, sorry, my husband's flirting with me right now. <laughs> well, I'm not going to say sorry. It's great. I love it. Um, if you haven't yet uh, seen them, I'd like for you to grab them um, at that soulfelt.com website. So are you more clairvoyant? Are you more clairaudient? Are you more clairsentient? Are you more claircognizant? Do you know if you're an empath? So again, do your breath work 10 to 15 minutes every day. And uh, remember when you're starting out, feet flat on the floor, spine straight. Uh, this is important so that the energy can expand, so that it can widen. Uh, meditation is very, very powerful. So I'm just going to leave you with some words from Deepak Chopra, who I love. Meditation. Meditation offers the field of all possibilities, the field of synchronicity, a surrender to uncertainty, a space to realize the power of intention in order to take those beautiful leaps into the world of imagination. Which remember, imagination is the doorway to your intuition and it is the path to cross the veil. So some of you, you don't like the word meditation. It's kind of freaking you out. It's breath work. Connect with the breath. Go within. Be the observer. Notice what occurs. And then become the breath. Become the observed. Just for a while. And enjoy the experience. I'll see you guys in Module 2.